what is going on crypto peeps welcome back to the traveling crypto a little later video today apologies for that but i've been really busy so looking at the overall market cap one thing to note today is we actually got to the lowest market cap that we've seen in 2018 this is the lowest market cap since november 2nd 2017 we actually hit 189 today now what that could signify is that we're in a period of capitulation right capitulation literally means just to surrender or to give up and we're getting to that point if you look at the market sentiment if you talk to people that that you know that are trading there's a sense that wait a minute I know I'm supposed to believe in crypto, but is this the end? When people who call themselves committed or who have been committed to the, the you know, to the crypto movement, when those people are questioning whether crypto is still alive or not, you know that you are entering capitulation phase. Now, I've seen capitulation on the stock market before, and this is what it looks like. It, it, I, I do think we actually have more room to drop, and we'll get to the Bitcoin analysis in a second. But market capitulation, we are definitely starting in, in that realm where people, you know, we used to make fun of those naysayers that say, oh, crypto is a pipe dream. It's, it's never going anywhere. But now there are people within the community itself that are questioning whether you know, this is something that's that's here to stay, or are we seeing the burst of a bubble where we'll no longer recover to prices that we saw previously? And once that happens, once people within start questioning, you know that we're entering a capitulation phase. So let us get right into the analysis. So we are in this long descending triangle. No surprise here, this is the daily chart been going on since January. That's why it's funny to me when people say that, yeah, we're gonna break out of here and, and you know, that's it. This is the, the last drop or the last dip. I, I don't know where people get these concepts. I think that these are just empty ideas that form on social media or whatever and are espoused and then people buy into them. So this concept of the last drop before the moon or the last dip before the moon, I mean, we're in a market, anything can happen. And what's most probable coming from a descending triangle is a breakout to the bottom. Now, in the past, we have seen descending triangles break out to the upside, right? Fail, because this is a bearish pattern. So we've seen these bearish patterns fail and break to the upside. And when has that happened? When have we seen that before? Well, we see that before when the price gets to this apex point, right? This, this point of convergence on the triangle, this apex point where there is no more room there's no fluctuations and so you have shorts that are just dumping at these price levels because there is there you know the, the price isn't moving up for you to short at these upper levels here so shorts keep piling in piling and piling in and you get to something like this this is just the btc shorts right here where you know shorts are, to, are at an all-time high and we have never seen this actually where shorts hit a high then drop to a swing low and then right away hit the swing high again, forming this, this sort of double top. We haven't seen that before, at least on the Bitfinex short data that we currently have on TradingView, right? Usually you'll see a spike in shorts when the price has bottomed out for that period. And then you'll see the price rally and then there'll be a short covering rally or a short squeeze that will happen thereafter. However, in this case, we saw shorts hit close to an all time high drop back down and then come back up to an all-time high shortly thereafter. This was only, uh, what, two weeks, two weeks apart between these two swing highs on, on the shorts. So we've seen descending triangles break out to the upside when this has happened before in traditional markets because these shorts keep piling on at such a short range, right? You're within this small range here because you're nearing the apex of the triangle. We've seen shorts come in in this small range and they just get piled on to the point where any rally starts the snowball effect of, of closing shorts. Now, of course, that doesn't have to be the case, right? I don't want you guys to think that just because shorts are piling up, that means we will see a short squeeze. There could be a scenario that, that plays out where we break this 2018 support at 5,800, right? And the shorts start winning actually, right? The, the short positions are actually closing positively because the price keeps dropping. We don't have to always see a short squeeze. I don't want you to get into this mentality where, oh, shorts are rising. That means we're gonna see a short squeeze. No, shorts, they're, they're being placed for a reason. It's because traders think that these shorts will become successful and they can if the price keeps rallying down. So if we take a look at like a, an intraday chart, this is the, the four hour chart on Bitcoin, you'll see that we are forming a descending, uh, sorry, a bearish pennant, right? So you have the, the pennant here coming from, and here's the, the flag coming from 
the resistance point of the descending triangle, and you see this uh, um, bearish pennant forming, which is also a bearish signal, right? The breakout from this is usually to the downside. So we could see a downside break uh, down to 5,800 and then back up to the resistance point, or we could you know, break the support of 5,800 and see some of these shorts winning out. And if we, if we do break this 5,800 because it has been a 2018 support, right? This is a nine month long support level now. I, I think that the effects will be drastic and we'll see, a, you know, push down to at least 5,000, maybe even below that. Either way, right now, BTC is in a no trade zone for me. I'm fully in fiat or tether at the moment. BTC is not in a trade zone for me. Along the way, we did play the swings on this. If you want access to the trade alerts, link is in the description. And I did, we did manage to make some good profits during the swings within uh, this triangle. You can see it better on the one day chart. But within this descending triangle, we did play these swings quite often and made some good, you know, some good profit doing that. Um, but right now, BTC is in a no trade zone because it is so tenuous. Nobody, I don't care who they are, nobody can tell you <clears throat> what direction BTC is going in. There is just a plausible scenario and a less, uh, a probable scenario and a less probable scenario. And and in my view, the path of least resistance is is the way down, at least in the short term, right? And the volume itself actually speaks to this as well. It's it's not like we've you know been doing tremendously well on on volume. So, if you look at the weekly chart for BTC, you'll see that this is actually a bullish pattern. This descending wedge here, you could still have a bullish pattern. Imagine that BTC's price falls to the support of this descending wedge, right? The pattern can still exist right? It could still be valid and you could still see a breakout, a positive breakout to the upside eventually on the weekly chart. However, the pattern can still exist if BTC gets to, you know, $3,000 or 2,500 because that's the support of this descending wedge. So I'm not saying that will happen. I'm just saying that, you know, get an overall perspective or, or an overall point of view of what's going on. Instead of always looking at the daily chart or the hourly chart, step back for a second and look and look what is possible. So if you're looking at the daily chart and the price goes down to 3000, you're going to panic. If you're looking at the weekly chart and the price goes down to 3000, you're still within play on this bullish pattern. It's just that it's going to take longer than you like. So another thing you have to train yourself out of is to get out of this mind state of instant gratification. Crypto has spoiled traders, especially new traders, into thinking that trades usually result in positive outcomes really quickly because it has for a short while. But trading is a long-term game. It is not a short-term game. Even day traders, right? Yeah, they're within within the day, they're scalping or they're making, you know, a few percentage points here and there. But within the grand scheme of things, they, they have to profit over a long period of time to see any real income from trading. So trading is a long-term game. It's not a short-term game. This is not Vegas. If you're feeling lucky or you know, you're getting bored by, by waiting on the sidelines for, for things to move or for there to be a good trading opportunity, just take your money, go to Vegas. It's a lot funner. At least the drinks are free and you're not sitting behind your computer screen all day. Anyway, that is it for this video. Remember that cash is also a position. If you want access to the trade alerts, link is in the description. Link to the Discord is in the description as well if you want to get a hold of me. For the couple of you that have asked me about these dad hats, it's on my website, thetravelingcrypto.com. That is it for today. Stay safe out there. Peace.